This video is brought to you by Casetify. So I've had the iPhone 13 Pro Max for about three months now, and it's nearly perfect in every way, and I'm gonna go over the ways I think it is, but there's just one flaw that bugs me that kind of like doesn't make sense considering how capable and professional this phone really is. Hi sisters! <laughs> um, next up, let's talk about display brightness, or just display in general. Brightness being the first thing I wanna touch on, and the reason I'm in bed is because I often find myself just blinded by this thousand nit display. And it's wonderful outside, but I mean, yeah, it, it definitely hurts sometimes, but it goes to show that this display is just fabulously bright, too bright even in some circumstances. I also really enjoy ProMotion with the 13 Pro Max. Your other 13 Pro users have said similar things to me, even though they're not like as techy or nerdy or whatever. Um, a higher refresh rate really does make your experience feel a lot better on the day to day, just like it does with the iPad Pro. Also too, I switched to this from a 12 Pro after switching to the 11 Pro from the 11 Pro Max. So basically what I'm saying is I got fed up with the bigger size of the iPhone back then, but because of the quality of this display, you know, considering how bright it is and with the ProMotion and what it offers, it's worth the extra size and weight. I love the extra screen real estate here. 6.7 inches does go a long way. Um, I really like how big the display is for typing with my keyboard and also too, media consumption is excellent as well. For example, here I can go into TikTok and I can scroll through um, my For You page really well. <laughs> and also too, YouTube is a dream. I can scroll over here to the pre-picked video because in the previous take, the options were awful. Um, so what the fuck, okay, anyway. Um, yeah, I really do enjoy consuming media on here. Also too, just going through my day here, going into Safari and other things as well, you know, doing research like CF Burger Creamery whatever I have open here, but having a bigger display definitely makes a difference here. It makes me feel like I can do more work on the go without pulling out my iPad or my laptop. Next up, let's talk about the cameras on these phones. Um, they are super, super capable at 12 megapixels, even for taking pictures of stupid stuff like, oh, like, is this the right cleanser or whatever. If I take a picture here, you can see just the crazy amount of depth of field. I'll probably just put it up on screen for you to see. But yeah, just for casual, just point and shoot photography and videography, as you're seeing here, this is being shot on an iPhone 13 Pro. It's just the quality and the processing are incredible. They're like top notch, the best, close to, of course, the Pixel 6 Pro and like the Samsung Galaxy S21, but the iPhone just in general is very solid when it comes to photos and video iPhone 13 Pro Max and iPhone 13 Pro are also great for night video and photo as well. Apple made some major improvements with the sensors and sensor shift and also, you know, processing as well year on year. And yeah, the photos that I've gotten in low light are just magnificent. I mean, maybe pixel level, maybe better in some cases, but I've really been liking this as a street photography, just machine in the day. And of course at night, like we are in right now, that makes total sense, but I'm not gonna retake this because people are just living their lives and compared to like an A7. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh shit. Before we continue with the video here, I have a brief message from today's video sponsor, Casetify. Once again, this video is brought to you by Casetify and their MagSafe compatible impact and ultra impact cases. First up, there's an endless amount of print options to choose from on their website, from plain black to a fabulous pink lion. You name it, they got it. Not only that, they are non-hazardous or toxic, made out of 65% recycled materials, and feature a Defensify antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria that it comes in contact with. They also keep your phone super safe with plenty of material protecting the sides and corners and SheTech 2.0 and the Ultra Impact cases specifically. So we're gonna do a little drop test here in terms of durability. These cases come in an impact and ultra impact durability spec. So I'm gonna do it with the ultra because I really don't wanna break my phone, but you know, uh, we probably won't hopefully. So in three, two, one. <laughs> oh God. And as you can see, nothing happened. We can honestly do it again because I, yeah, just why not, you know, for funsies. And there you go. Um, the corners here are really protected, so that definitely helps. This is rated up to 9.8 feet of drop height, and the impact or regular impact cases that they have um, are rated at 6.6. .6. So yeah, pretty durable case if you ask me. Go to casedivide.com slash Noah to save 15% on your order. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested. Oh, hello, dear. Our next topic is performance. And honestly, I don't have much to say. It's nearly perfect. The A15 on the inside is more than powerful enough for everything that you would do. I mean, yes, there are some hiccups and stutters here and there, but I attribute that just to some bugs in iOS 15. But other than that, this thing is just 
buttery smooth it opens apps just perfectly you will have no trouble gaming you can game at 120 hertz and yeah it's just an all-out beast and honestly it feels overpowered i mean there is an extra gpu core in here which is probably needed for the 120 hertz and also running games a little better than the iphone 13 does but yeah, I mean, in terms of performance, this thing is gonna last you for years and years and years. And for me, it's overkill. Even though I do some crazy stuff like 4K 60 video, like my friend is shooting on the other iPhone 13 Pro that I have here. Um, but yeah, it has been perfect. And there really isn't anything else to say about performance and the chip that accompanies uh, the software here. And the final positive quality I wanna to touch on is battery life. If you watched my day in the life video with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you may have seen that in my 18 hour day in Manhattan, this thing lasted for the first 12 before I had to plug it in. So crazy battery life, even when you're really hitting it hard with a lot of video shooting, photography, video watching, anything you name. I mean, this phone will last you through the day, especially with FaceTime calls. I'm always making phone calls and FaceTime calls and this thing deals with that like a champ, even on 5G or LTE. And also too, I don't really plug it in during the day here. It lasts that long. I'm actually using wireless CarPlay here. I used to have wired CarPlay, but I got like an Amazon dongle or like a, just a dongle off Amazon. Uh, and yeah, so normally when I'd have this plugged in, it would juice up a little bit. Even with this happening, I don't really notice a difference in my everyday battery life because again, the battery life or battery capacity here is so good as well as the you know, just everyday screen on time efficiency that you get with the A15. Even at max brightness, uh, like I said in the intro, or not in the intro, in the display section of this video, I mean, the display on here is really bright. And considering how bright it can get, you know, the fact that I end my days with like no less than like 30% charge is really, really nice. But what's the one thing that's wrong with this nearly perfect phone? And as you can see, this is a different phone. This is not the Pro Max, this is the Pro, but this is the phone that I've been shooting this entire video on. And my one gripe with the iPhone 13 Pro series, specifically the 13 Pro Max, is the fact that there is still lightning here. A nine-year-old port is on this advanced of a phone. The fact that I can't import all of this footage that I got, 4K 60 footage, over a cable in like a minute or two pisses me off. I have to go through AirDrop and then it doesn't work. And if I actually, the one time I tried shooting cinematic video with my Pro Max and like it was like 45 minutes long, it's not happening. You can't import that with a lightning cable. It takes five years. It has to like convert and all this stuff. But if it was available to be transferred over USB-C, it would be absolutely no problem. So if Apple's going to put a pro camera in here and call this a pro phone, we need a pro port from the iPad Pro or from the MacBook Pro. So yeah, I hope the UN comes up with that resolution that makes everybody have USB-C um, because like this is enough. Like Apple needs to stop. This is like, it makes absolutely no sense. And that is the one thing I think is wrong with the iPhone 13 Pro, and specifically, once again, the 13 Pro Max. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. Once again, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is just an incredible phone, even for its seat price, but the lightning port is just stupid. So I really hope that Apple considers how powerful the iPhone is now and appropriately gives it the best port possible. I'd appreciate it if you leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. Buy some Star Wars... <laughs> Buy some Star Wars Lego for the ones you love. Uh, and um, as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one. Wow, that was crazy. I f***ing did an intro in one take. Next up, I want to talk. You should start with, uh, what does James Charles say? Hi, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sisters. Next up, we're going to talk about the split. Take 37 and three quarters. Is it on? Is the mic on? Okay. Oh, my God. The bells in the background. Just magical. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see that? Yeah. It's ridiculous. But what's up? We're doing uh, some YouTube. <laughs> <laughs>